Is there a method, a shortcut to study payment instruments and payment systems in your country or in any other country? The answer is yes, and I'm about to teach you that method. It is simple and extremely powerful. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is John Paul. I'm payment author and trainer and run the blog paymentor.com. I'm co-founder of Pamrix, a Qualiope certified training organization and a career accelerator for payment professionals. I have over 17 years of experience in the payment industry and I'm still in love. But things have not always been that easy and lovely for me. It took me about four years to really understand domestic payments. So the information that I shared with you in the previous video and that I'm going to share with you in this video will enable you to save precious time. Please watch the previous video if you have not done yet so. It will be easier for you to understand this one. In the following minutes, I share a secret, an approach that can help you to study any domestic payment system anywhere in the world. What you will learn is a very powerful tool, a tool to study domestic payment systems in your country and in any other country. To begin, let's go back to the generic model of payment systems at country level presented in a previous video. Now, look at this picture carefully and let's do a simple exercise. Let's remove all the interbank systems except one. Let's also remove all banks except two banks. For each bank, we keep the end party that is connected to it. What will the result look like? So again, we want to remove all the interbank systems except one, and we want to remove all the banks except two banks and their respective end parties. What will we get as results? This is the end result. We see two banks on the picture. Each bank is connected to the interbank system 2 and to the central bank system. Each bank is also connected to an end party. Banks have been renamed Bank 1 and Bank A. This is to ease the understanding of what is presented in the following and help you connect the dots. Interbank system 2 may be used for the exchange of messages related to one or many payment instruments. And we keep it in our model because we are interested in payment message exchange through that interbank system specifically. Now, let's make this model look more beautiful. Here's the result. The picture you see here is like the previous picture, but presented in a slightly different way. It is called the four corner model. I call it even the fabulous four corner model. We still see that each bank is connected to an end party. Both bank one and bank A are connected to the interbank system two and to the central bank system. We have put the interbank system two and the central bank system in one box that we call CSM. CSM stands for clearing and settlement mechanism. As we saw before, the interbank system two may be used for the exchange of messages related to one or many payment instruments. This abstraction is very useful because in general, we study one payment instrument at a time. So we do not need a model with all interbank system. It is enough if we have the interbank system for the payment instrument that we are studying. This simple and powerful model can be used to analyze message exchange between bank and customer and among banks. So in quite a lot of situations. And now, we realize something very important. The four corner model is nothing but a simplified open loop model. So when we see a four corner model, we should immediately think of open loop models and vice versa. In the following, we will see a few examples that show that the four corner model is really the Swiss knife to analyze almost any payment instrument. The four corner model is really fundamental. As payments professional, if you want to build your payment skills on the rock, on strong foundation, then you should study and analyze the four corner model. Now, we'll consider a few examples of four corner models. 
This is the four corner model for the SEPA credit transfer or more generally for a credit transfer. In fact, you can use it for any credit transfer. If you compare it to the initial four corner model, you see that N party one becomes the originator. Bank one is the originator bank. N party A becomes the beneficiary and bank A is the beneficiary bank. Originator bank and beneficiary banks are interconnected through the CSM systems. The clearing mechanism is implemented in clearing systems. Among others, here are a few clearing systems for the SEPA credit transfer. Core in France, Equins in the Netherlands, EBA Step 2, the Pan-European Automated Clearing House or Peach, the retail payment system in Germany and so on. The settlement mechanism is implemented in the settlement system. In the SEPA area, there is one settlement system for the SEPA credit transfer and other payment instruments. It is called Target 2 and is operated by the European Central Bank. Of course, if you do not live in the SEPA area, then you have other clearing and settlement systems, but they perform the same functions. Now, Let's look at the four corner model for car payments. We see the same structure. Isn't that interesting? Now, if you compare this model with the initial four corner model, you see that N party one becomes the car holder. Bank one becomes the issuer or issued bank. N party A is the merchant or acceptor. Bank A is the acquirer. It is the merchant's bank most of the time. As usual, issuer and acquirer, the two banks are interconnected through the CSM. Typical clearing system for car payments are Visa, MasterCard, China Union Pay, core system for domestic car payments in France, retail payment system for domestic car payments in Germany, and so on. The settlement systems used are currency specific. We can cite Fedwire in the United States for the US dollar, HVPS in China for the Chinese Yuan, Target 2 in the SEPA area for the Euro, RTGS in Ninja for the Indian Rupee and so on. In the world, there is one settlement system per country or monetary zone and it is used to settle the transactions in the currency of that country or region. Here, we begin to see how useful and powerful the four corner model is. It allows us to easily analyze car payment systems. One last example to see that we can use the four corner model to analyze and study almost any payment instrument. Now we consider the four corner model for check payments. If you compare this model with the initial four corner model, you see that N party one becomes the drawer, bank one becomes the drawee or payer of the check, N party A becomes the payee and bank A is the payee bank. Drawers Bank and Pays Bank are again interconnected through the CSM. With regards to clearing systems, we can mention the checks clearing system in the United States, call system in France, image clearing system in the United Kingdom, and many others. Again, the settlement systems used are currency specific. FedY in the USA for the US dollar, Target 2 in SEPA for the Euro, CHAPS in the United Kingdom for the pound sterling. I think you now see how powerful the four corner model is. It is really the place to start when you begin with a new payment instrument. But do you know what? This is only the beginning. There are other secrets. There are other secrets in the four corner model that I need to share with you. So stay tuned. The four corner model can be divided into two spaces. The customer to bank space, and the interbank space. The four corner model is presented here so as to highlight these two spaces. Let's consider the customer to bank space first. The customer to bank space is the space where customers and banks exchange payment information generally through standardized messages. When the information is sent from the customer to the bank, these are orders or instructions. For instance, a customer may ask the bank to debit his account and credit one or many beneficiary accounts, as it is the case for the credit transfer instruction. Or the customer may ask the bank to debit 
debt draw accounts and credit his own account, as it is the case for direct debit instructions. Another option is the customer asking the bank to cancel a previously sent instruction. In any case, the customer asks the bank to do something about an order or an instruction. Now, when the information is sent from the bank to the customer, it is considered as reporting. The bank is informing the customer about the status of an order that was previously sent or is providing account statements. Note that customer to bank space and bank to customer space mean exactly the same thing. In practice, people usually say customer to bank space. The interbank space, as the name suggests, is the space where banks exchange payment information among themselves. Payment information can be exchanged either directly, like between a bank and its sub-participants, or through clearing and settlement system. When the banks go through a clearing or settlement system, the interbank systems must first receive the payment message, process it, and then forward it to the receiving bank. Clearing systems generally require banks to use particular message formats that bear additional information specific to those systems. As a result, the formats used to exchange messages directly between two banks can be different from the ones used to exchange messages between a bank and a clearing system. The four corner model provides a good structure to study payment messages and scheme, and we will see why with a powerful method that we are going to consider now. It is called the LINF method. LINF stands for list and identify messages in the four corner model. It is very, very powerful. The LINF method is probably the most important tool to analyze and study messages of a payment scheme. The main purpose of this method is to quickly find out which messages are exchanged in a payment scheme and for which purpose. Here is how it works. The LINF method for a specific scheme consists of three major steps. First, list all the messages exchanged in that particular scheme. Based on the scheme documentation, it is generally easy to do that. Second, identify clearly which party in the four corner model sends and which party receives each message. In order to do this, you must draw a four corner model for that particular scheme and identify the parties in the customer to bank space or in the interbank space that send or receive a particular message. And as last step, find out for which purpose each message is used in the scheme. The LINF method is very useful. It allows you to easily reach the following three objectives. Number one, get an overview of all messages exchanged in the specific scheme you are studying. Number two, clearly see which messages are exchanged in the customer to bank space and which messages are exchanged in the interbank space. Finally, number three, examine each message individually in order to understand its structure and why it is needed. The LINF method is very powerful because it can be used for any payment scheme. If we apply this method for the SCT scheme, for example, we will download the documentation of the SCT scheme and then find all messages listed within. After that, for each message, we will find out which party sends and which party receives it. And finally, we will go through the documentation to understand for which purpose each message is used. This is how simple things can be when you use the LINF method. After the first two steps, this is what we get for the SCT scheme. The SCT scheme or SEPA credit transfer scheme is a domestic payment scheme in Europe. But again, you can use the LINF method to identify and study messages of any domestic payment scheme. That is why it is so powerful. We presented the four corner model in a different way here to better highlight the messages. For the SCT scheme, there are two messages in the customer to bank space, the pain one version three and the pain two version three. The pain one flows from the customer, the originator to the bank, and the pain two goes from the bank to the customer. In the interbank space, we find quite many messages. 
You have listed 11, but you could have listed more. The main thing is to understand that the same message can have different meaning in different contexts. Did you pay attention to the direction of the messages? In payment, the direction of messages is crucial. It is therefore important to understand which party sends and which party receives a message. Finally, you need to understand for which reason each message is used. In general, the scheme documentation will provide the information required for that. Getting this overview makes things very simple. We reached the end of this video. If you learned something new, please take 30 seconds and post a comment below. My team and I will really appreciate that. In the next video, we'll talk about cross-border payments. Many things cross-border payments are very complex. We have a different view. In the next video, you'll get powerful tips and strategies to understand how cross-border payments work. If you want to become highly skilled in payments in a very short time, in a pretty short time, then join the Payment Mastering Program. Register now before it is too late. It is a limited time offer. The Payment Mastering Program is only open for a few days and then we close registration and start the class. Do not waste time, do not procrastinate. Click the button below this video. If you join the program, you will make staggering progress in payments and that will create many opportunities and possibilities for your career. See you in the next video.